because even if you have all war you're gonna die everything is gonna be finished one day and and a uh, couple people gonna come to grave put you inside there and finish because I really believe the next life and it's gonna uh, everything what you did everything what you're gonna do uh, in next life you have to do something what important for you in next life you know like my father always talk about this with me like uh, he always try to do something good for people he always do something and and he always say I hope this is gonna help me for next life and uh, I have same feeling I have same same, same mind we know as human beings we really agree on many things but our birth and death are something that nobody disagrees with yeah everybody accepts that we were born yeah and when we were born there were public celebrations yeah but when somebody dies it's a private morning isn't it and of course with everything else movies and the media try to commercialize death. Yes, that's right. They're literally traumatizing us to get us to devote ourselves to their movie or whatever. I mean, think about it, yeah? All of these classics that we remember, even from childhood, they have all involved a death. Be it Lion King, be it Bambi, be it Finding Nemo, Harry Potter. <laughs> you name it. Even if you look in Bollywood, yeah? You've got Dev Das, Kalhonaho. Even iconic writings like Romeo and Juliet, Juliet, Macbeth, Crime and Punishment. And I guess maybe because we haven't experienced death ourselves, and we experience life every single day. So we're used to life. Yeah, we're used to existing. We're used to seeing everything around us and death. The only time we get to experience it is when it actually happens. The other times when we see it is when it's happening to other people. So that's how our mind has just, I don't know, rationalize that, I guess. So it's only when you close your eyes and you actually think, imagine if it was to happen right now, what events would unfold? What would they call me? Would they call me a corpse, a dead body? Because when you die, that's literally what you are. You're a piece of flesh now. So in Islam, we are told to reflect and ponder upon death profusely. Why? Because it helps us appreciate our life and encourages us not to waste it. And even you got famous novelists like Dostoevsky. Some even argue that he is a better novelist or a better writer than Shakespeare. And he's written a book about a person that's about to be shot yeah, in front of a firing squad. And he talks about how he perceives life at that moment in time. Yeah, he sees a church opposite him and right on top of the church there's a spire and the way the light reflects upon the spire is something that he sees. It's something so small, something seemingly so insignificant but it shows that at that moment we're, we're clinging on to the most smallest of things but when we're alive so many big things go wasted and then he talks about how that person then survived and how his life changed yeah how his perspective changed but to other people he was seen as an idiot <laughs> and that's why he calls the book idiot lol you got another novelist yeah by the name of leo tolstoy he also is a higher ranking writer and he wrote a book called ivan Ilyich, in which a famous professional lawyer gets a fatal illness and then he's on his deathbed and then the writer talks about how he changes his view on existence and on life. The people around him, yeah, the people that were once upon a time, you know, his friends and the people that, you know, were with him. And then he was able to relate more with the slave boy that used to come and help him. He had more respect for him. So even these big novelists, their books are famous because they talk about these things because it's a reality. Who's that knocking at the door? <laughs> yes, it's death. Better. People say, oh man, my iman's low, or this is low, or that's low. Mate, just really internalize it, yeah? And one of the exercises, close your eyes and think it's happening right now 
and think practically what would happen next, who would come into the room, what would be the next step, what would you be leaving behind? And then ask yourself, are you guaranteed tomorrow? I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, you're not guaranteed tomorrow, then why are we so comfortable? I mean, I've read loads of self-help books, yeah, they're, they're really brilliant, yeah. I've got to give credit where credit is due, but when it comes to purpose, that's where they fall short. Because, you know, it doesn't matter if you are a rapper, yeah, you're an actress or you're a politician or whoever. Yeah, after you're on stage and you've done that and you get into your car and you look out the window, that moment where you're by yourself, how can you not wonder, what am I doing here? <laughs> What's going to happen when these eyes close and this heart stops beating? Yeah, No matter who you are watching, yeah, you've gone through this moment. It may just be on the train ride to work yeah, or just walking to the shops buying some milk and you just look up and you're like, boy, there is going to come a time where I'm just going to stop existing. I wonder how that's going to feel. Yeah, because I'm so used to existing. I don't know how it feels not to exist. After this video finishes, I want you to raise your hands. That's right, I want you to raise your hands and just talk to Allah and just say what's in your heart. Allah, I don't know. I don't trust these people. They're constantly giving me negativity, but I know you're real. I know you're real. I'm weak. Yeah, I'm at a job in which, you know, all this stuff is happening or my friends are like this. But Allah, I know you are haq. Allah, I know there is a day of judgment and Allah, I am weak. Please help me. I can't do this without your help. And just this honesty and sincerity, you'll see how this honesty is your first step. Assalamu alaikum.